Hello, Tataka here with another Starbase TLDR tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing a brief overview of YOLO, buttons, doors, and other devices. My goal here today is to help others get into YOLO in an easy to digest manner. There are definitely a lot of programmers in the community, and oftentimes they use their fancy schmancy programming lingo when discussing YOLO that personally, I don't understand. But lucky for you guys, I'm not a programmer, I'm just a guy. I'll go through the basics and hopefully spell it out for everyone in a way that makes it understandable. So let's start with variables. Every device in Starbase has these. On the left are the variables, and on the right are the value of those variables. If you want to show a readout of, say, your battery power on a progress bar, all you need to do is grab this variable from a battery, change this variable in the progress bar so it matches, and now it will display the value of that variable. We can name these variables however we like. I'll change this variable in the battery to X, change it in the progress bar, and you see it's still matching. When it comes to YOLO, if you want to use a variable from a device, you will need to put a colon before it. Let's use my generator manager script for example. It uses fuel chamber unit rate limit, this variable from the fuel chamber, and stored battery power from the battery. If we break down this script, this is what it looks like with numbers instead of variables. It works just like algebra. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the default names for most things, but you are free to rename variables however you like. Progress bars are extremely useful. They can show you live values of the various variables and can even be used for ship diagnostic. Pan of value is the variable name, min value and max value are the min and max. Generally you want to use zero for your minimum. The variable resolution is how many decimal places you want to display. Some people like to crank it up to say 0.01 to show two decimals, but I keep it on one for simplicity. On every ship I make, I like to add these progress bars where they can be easily seen. Stored battery power with a max of 10,000 so I can monitor how much juice my batteries have. Fuel chamber unit rate with the default 100 so I can monitor how hard my generators are working. Stored raw fuel with a max of 300,000 to watch how much fuel I have. And gas container stored resource with a max of 1 million or whatever size propellant tank I'm using. If you wanted to have separate displays for different tanks, fuel rods, batteries, etc., you would need to go into the devices and rename them and add a new progress bar for each one. Let's say I have three batteries, and I want to see their fullness for each. I'll name them battery 1, battery 2, and battery 3. Now we come back to our progress bars, name them the same. Battery 1, battery 2, and battery 3. They're all going to show the same amount, but to prove they work, let's change the priority of battery number 2. We can see now on our bars that battery 2 has stopped draining and will be charged once 1 and 3 are full. Now let's take a look at a button. There are several types, but they generally all work the same. Their info can be found on the wiki, along with everything else I'm talking about today. The button state is your variable. The on state value will be the number our button state variable equals when the button is on or pressed. And the off state value is the value when the button is off. Button style determines whether it's a hold, zero, or toggle, one. Let's call this button my account. We'll set the off state to zero and the on state to one million. To make things easy, I'll put a progress bar right here and we'll call it my account with a max value of 1 million. Let's go into test flight, hop in the chair, and we can see right now the button is off and I'm very poor. My count is zero. Now when we press the button, I'm rich, 1 million. Button off, back to zero, sad times. For a quick overview of the buttons, some are toggle on or off, some have a safety lid that needs to be lifted before they can be pressed, the twist handle is on or off, and some can even light up. You can experiment with the different functions by checking out the variables on the wiki and playing with them in-game. Well, the light-up ones just need their color variable changed and someone can blink, making them useful for warning lights. The last one is the switch, which has three positions. I'll show an example of how to use that one later on in this video. Lamps and hinges are much simpler than buttons. Lamps have a base and a bulb. The bulb just has this one variable, 0 for off, 1 for on. You can control this with a button or YOLO by setting up variables for it. Let's change the bulb to lamp and change this button to lamp as well. When we press the button, it comes on. Press it again, lamp off. Very easy. Hinges for doors are similar. The only real difference is you can set the starting angle and the ending angle. The starting angle is in its off position and the end angle is its on position. This is our on off variable. Here we have a simple play door. Let's name the hinge door and this button door as well. Just like the lamp, off 
the hinge is currently at its zero degree starting position. When we turn it on, it opens up to 90 degree or an angle. Turn it off and the door returns to zero. The target velocity variable is just the speed at which the hinge tries to move. Three is the default value and I would recommend leaving it there unless you need to adjust it for reasons like for timing with other parts. If you crank it up to 10 when there's only a single plate, it might snap off, bang around, and break something. Alright everyone, it's YOLO time. So, YOLO is in-game scripting language. It's based off of some real programming language, but I have no idea what it is. I'm not a programmer. I'm just a guy who figured it out enough to write my own scripts, and hopefully you will too. So to cover the basics, YOLO is slow. It only moves at 0.2 seconds per line, meaning in one second it goes through 5 lines, and it takes 4 seconds to go through the whole chip 20 lines. For this reason, many people split their scripts up into multiple chips to get faster results. First thing you can do, change variables. I mentioned earlier that if you want to use a variable from another device in YOLO, you'll need to add a colon in front of it. Let's put a progress bar here, call it numbers. Now on our YOLO chip, on the first line we'll do numbers equals zero. Now for line six, numbers equals one. Line 11, numbers equals two. And for line 16, numbers equals three. Also, there's a 70 character limit per line and there are many cases where you do not need to use spaces, such as for this script we're writing here. Now, test flight, and let's watch the progress bars. About once per second, the value changes 0 through 3, and then back to 0. We can look at the chip while it's running here to see it lines up with the progress bars in real time. Let's spice up our script a little bit. In YOLO, you can create local variables. They work just like the other ones, except they cannot be used outside of the YOLO chip they exist in. Let's rearrange these number lines a bit. For our top line, we'll create a local variable a without a colon and say it equals 10. Numbers will equals a. Next line, we'll say a equals 20. And a few lines down, let's change a again to equal 30. Now on numbers equals a again, let's change it two more times, a equals 40 and a equals 50. Numbers a once more. Let's speed it up and after this line, we want the YOLO to start over again, so we enter go to 1. So that once this line has run, the next line will be the first one. We can see the numbers value change according to the value of A. We can see the YOLO work line by line. For proof, let's turn A into a global variable by adding a colon in front of it and add a progress bar called A. Now when we run that, we can see the A value is changing much more often than numbers. All right, now it's going to get a little complicated. I'm going to keep things easy. It'll be on you to experiment and ask questions in the main Starbase Discord to expand on it. Let's talk if statements. If statements compare two things, and you can tell it to do one thing if it's true, and another if it's not. If statements can check if something is less than or equals to, greater than or equals to, equal to, or does not equal to. The format is simple. If variable equals value, then do this. Else, do that, end. Every if statement needs to have an end, or else the YOLO won't recognize it is complete. Let's write a script, so in order to turn this light on, we need both of our buttons set to on. We have button 1, button 2, and our light is called lamp. Button 1 on state is 2, button 2 on state is 8. First line of our script, let's create another variable for this so we can watch it. A equals button 1 plus button 2, just like algebra. So A will equal 0 when both buttons are off, it will equal 2 when button 1 is on, 8 when button 2 is on, and 10 when both are on. Next line, if A equals 10, then lamp equals 1 but we want it off otherwise, so we add else lamp equals zero for off. End the line and add go to one. So this yellow chip is only running line one and line two back and forth. Time to test. So right now as we can see, A equals the value of our buttons. If we turn button one on, it equals two. If we turn button two on, it equals eight. With both on, it equals 10 and the light comes on. Let's break down that generator manager script I mentioned earlier and look at it in detail. I've got some progress bars showing the related variables. We've got our fuel chamber limit, our rate, and our battery power. For testing, I've got something on this ship running to constantly drain the power. The way the script works is it says, hey, the value for fuel chamber unit rate limit, which decides how much fuel our generators are allowed to use, is equal to 100 minus stored battery power divided by 100. When we run it, you can see it working. As the batteries tick down, the generator limit goes up, and so our generator rate slowly increases up to the limit. But once the batteries start recharging, it will equal itself out and the rate limit will decrease until it reaches an equilibrium.
Let's take a three position switch, call it mode, and create three different generator modes. We'll do if statements to check the position of the switch. If it's in the desired position, we'll change lines. If not, we'll check the next position. If mode equals negative one, then go to four, else go to two, end, and we'll repeat and modify the next ones. So when the switch equals negative one, it will go to line four. If not, it will try and see if the switch equals zero on line two. Now we'll use our gen manager script, but modify it for the different modes. First, we'll be passive. Second, we'll change this first 100 to 120, which means even if our batteries are at full 10,000 divided by 100 equals 100, our base gen rate limit will still be 20. The last mode will run the generators at full bore, so fuel chamber unit rate limit equals 100. To speed things up with the switch changes, we'll call each line back up to the line that brought them there, 4 back to 1, 5 back to 2, 6 back to 3. Run it. Mode minus 1 runs completely passive. Mode 0 runs a base 20. And now mode 1, you can see that our limit is 100 and the generators are working up to meet that. For our last trick, let's set up a simple timer to automatically close our ship's door after they open for 10 seconds. We've got a button and a hinge, both called door. First, let's make a local variable for our timer, just called time equals 0. On the same line, let's do door equals 1, then go to 2, else go to 1, n. This means the YOLO will constantly run line 1, setting time to 0, and checking to see if the door is opened. When the door does open, it will go to line 2. Here we'll do time plus plus. This is used to take the current value of time, which is 0, and it adds 1. You can also do minus minus to subtract 1. We want our door to close after 10 seconds, so we'll go down 5 lines to line 6, which will take 1 second, and do if time equals 11, go to 7, else go to 2, end. So when our door is open, time equals 1, after 1 second, it'll go back, now time equals 2, after 5 seconds, it will equal 6, and so on. Once our timer has reached 11, we'll go to the next line, set door to 0, and time back to 0 as well. Call back to line 1 to repeat the process. Now let's test it out. When we open the door by pressing the button, we can see our yellow hard at work. After 10 seconds, the door closes. Alright, that's it. That's the end of the video. TLDR YOLO for dummies, and people who don't already know programming. I was able to figure it out after a lot of trial and error, and hopefully this will get you on your way to writing simple scripts and setting up displays for your own ship. Again, if you have any YOLO related questions, I highly recommend asking them in the main Starbase Discord. That's where you'll get your fastest response from probably a dozen people. If you like this video, leave a like and let me know in the comments. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments and I'll try to do better next time. I read all of them. Good luck!